Okay, the next topic is local field factors. And these are corrections to the local electric field relative to the external driving electric field. And the idea is that if you're a, a, a molecule embedded in a medium and, and the optical beam is coming in to interrogate you, the electric field immediately around you is, is different than the external driving electric field in vacuum. And it's different because you're in a dielectric environment. And we can account for the enhancement factor of the electric field by nature of this dielectric environment through Fresnel factors. And we're going to use a simple Lorentz uh, Fresnel factor for describing most of what we're going to introduce here for microscopy applications. Uh, and at the end of the day, it will turn out, because the refractive index difference is generally quite small uh, as a function of position inside biological tissues and a lot of things that people look at with microscopy, we can often neglect these Fresnel factors in microscopy applications. The same can definitely not be said at surfaces, where you have a big refractive index difference typically across an interface, and a big difference in refractive index between an interfacial layer and the surrounding medium. Uh, but let's forge on with this and see where we get. So there is an enhancement in the electric field in the local environment immediately adjacent to where this particle, this hypothetical particle or, or uh, that's generating a signal is sitting, relative to that same driving electric field in vacuum or in air. And that uh, enhancement factor is given by the dielectric constant. If you have a high dielectric constant, then you can think of the, uh, the, the light slowing down through the medium, and so you have a, a higher local electric field because of that compression of the optical wave. And as a result, you have an enhancement in the local of the local field given by the dielectric constant here. So if the dielectric constant is 1, you can see that this whole thing just gives you um, a scaling of, of unity. And it's only when the dielectric constant is greater than 1 that you have a local electric field that is greater than than the, than the driving electric field. So we can account for all of these driving electric fields just by knowing the refractive index along the x, the y, and the z direction, replacing the, the, the squared refractive index for the dielectric constant. If these are all identical, then L is simply a scalar value. It's shown here as a matrix to allow for some diversity in the uh, direction along x, y, and z. If, 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 for example, if you're looking on a collagen fiber, then you might have a different refractive index along the primary axis of the fiber compared to the orthogonal axes. So z might not equal x and y, for example. Um, and that would be one way that you could account for it in this model. So if you have then, if you have then generated a signal in the local frame and you want to consider what's it going to look like in the laboratory frame and vacuum, it's an exactly identical functional form for the local field correction factor. Again, it's just the refractive index squared that dictates that scaling factor. How do we integrate this into the uh, linear algebra architecture that we've built up so far? We can do that by introducing a matrix L. And actually, I should put primes on both of these because both of these are the full 27 by 27 sets of local frame tensor elements. And this L, um, if it's not the identity matrix, if we really do need to include Fresnel factors explicitly, then we can plug that in. And we generate L by taking L2 omega and putting that in here, and then chronicling that with L omega twice to make a 27 by 27. And then what that effectively does is rescales each of the appropriate tensor elements in the local frame to make an effective uh, tensor, an effective local frame tensor element, an effective local frame tensor that incorporates all of the refractive index rescaling contributions. Uh, now, ideally, we actually want to recover this from measurements of that, but this is straightforward to build into the existing linear algebra architecture.